Coming up next on ECN, a regularly scheduled meeting of the Edinburgh City Council. On the Council, Mayor Ramiro Garza Jr., Council Member Daniel Dan Diaz, Council Member Jason De Leon, Council Member Johnny Garcia, and Mayor Pro Tem David White. Sitting in as advisor, City Manager Myra L. Ayala and City Attorney Omar Ochoa. And now live from Edinburgh City Hall, the Edinburgh City Council. Good evening, Edinburgh. All rise for the Honorable Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> it's joking. <laughs> okay, the mayor's not here. There might be a little comedic, comedic, comedic today. <laughs> now, well, welcome, Edinburgh. Uh, it's another city council meeting here today. Our mayor, Ramiro Garza Jr., is out on, uh, I guess he's out on business for his business. As most of you all know, this is really a volunteer job. And all of us do some type of work to feed our families and stuff like that. And the mayor has gone on a business trip to take care of his. So as mayor pro tem, it, it falls under, under me. So at this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and establish a quorum as we have all members here present with the exception of, of the mayor. And from there, we'd like to go to the prayer. And we're going to be inviting Reverend Michelle Verone from the Edinburgh First United Methodist Church. If you all please stand and remain standing for the pledge. Thank you. Give you thanks for this day and thanks for this city council, the members that you have called, that you have equipped and brought them into leadership for our city for such a time as, as this. Give them grace, wisdom, and discernment as they do the work before them. Bind them together in unity with your Holy Spirit that they might achieve the greatest good for your glory. We love you and bless you and pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Pledge allegiance. Next would be the certification of public notice. Yes, sir, Mayor Pro Tem White. The meeting was posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act on June 16, 2023 at 7 p.m., sir. Thank you. And our city attorney for the, the disclosure of conflicts of interest. Yes, sir. Under state law, a conflict of interest exists if a council member or certain members of that person's family has a qualifying financial interest in an agenda item. If there is a conflict, the member can't participate or vote on the item. Are there any conflicts to disclose? No, sir. No, no, no sir. Thank you. The next will be the city manager's report. Um, yes, good evening. Um, basically, I wanted to inform the council and the public that on June 7th, we did receive an email um, notifying us that our agenda management software agendas uh, was going to discontinue their application and their services by September 30th. So I wanted to inform council and, and like I mentioned, the public that we're currently working uh, with IT and the city secretary department on uh, obtaining a new agenda management software program. We're trying to do this with as little interruption as possible. Uh, once the city chooses an agenda management software, it'll take about three to four months to implement the changes and of course to train staff and train everyone uh, on the new software application. We're trying to expedite this with uh, a software program that's already in use in other municipalities. Um, and that will be compatible to what we currently have now on our website with the videos and all that uh, good stuff. In the meantime, uh, the software does feature HTML agenda, um, which may be uh, disrupted for uh, a few weeks. Um, but in the weeks following of September 30th, uh, Gendis will provide a method for us to download our documents as well um, from the uh, cloud storage. So I did want to make that announcement. I know we do have a couple of months. Uh, to work on this um, agenda management software uh, op uh, to obtain it. Um, but if you all have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can contact the city secretary department. Uh, they're the ones that are uh, going to be working along with IT on obtaining that management software program. That's all I have. Well, on a good note of that, we have Clarice. 
because I know Clarice knows how to do it the old-fashioned way when we're both having to do it the, the handwritten. Hey, Clarice. So we'll be able to muddle through. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how about public comments? Clarice. Yes, sir, Mayor Potem. The Edward City Council allows for a specific portion of the City Council meeting to be dedicated to public comments. Public comments are limited to three minutes. I will be taking time. Please note the public comment period is not interactive. The City Council may not respond to public comments. There is one uh, public comment here in Council, Ronnie Laralde, item 8A, Texas Cookham, 2023. Good evening, um, Council, Ronnie Lara, the Executive Director, Edinburgh Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I wanna thank you all for giving us the opportunity to speak today. Uh, our Texas Cookham High Stakes in Edinburgh is happening next weekend. It's the 17th annual. And to my right, I have our board president, Mr. Mario Liscano. He's a public administration officer for uh, DHR Health. Um, I did want to uh, invite the community to come out um, for this huge, one of Edinburgh's biggest events. So, I mean, it's a great event. It happens 4th of July weekend. Um, and High Stakes in Edinburgh is, is something special uh, to our city and our region. Um, it is a big barbecue uh, event that people travel from all over Texas. Uh, and we had, we've had cooks come from all over parts of the, the nation. Uh, but it is a big event. Uh, it's a qualifier, so it's a national qualifier for the World Championship Barbecue. Uh, for the American Royal, and it's also a state qualifier uh, for the World Championship of Steak on SCA, and both those uh, uh, cooks will represent Edinburgh uh, and many teams in our region. Um, there's a lot going on, so I'm gonna go through this timeline. I wanna make sure everyone catches it and attends. It's happening June uh, 30th and July 1st. Uh, so, like I said, it's a big barbecue cook-off, but we do have a lot of uh, local vendors and food vendors that will be participating. We have a family fun zone for both days uh, for, this, for this event uh, where kids can come out and enjoy and do gaming uh, and also having uh, moon jubs and kitty rides. Um, but we do have Friday night our big headliner Aaron Watson performing. And then on Saturday, we repeat the whole thing over. And of course, the competition is going on that day. Um, but we've added a few things. You know, we have the fire fi uh, Firecracker 5K that's happening at Ebony Hills Golf Course with our city parts department. We added uh, Freedom Yoga on the greens. Uh, so we're taking advantage of the greens during this time. Uh, and then, you know, we have also um, uh, USA Boxing. So the parks department has teamed up with USA Boxing to have 15 amateur fighters the majority of them are here from Edinburgh, but they'll be uh, boxing on the greens at Ebony Hills. So, uh, and of course we have a lot of local music. Uh, we have the No Duh Tribute Band and Foo Fighters uh, Tribute Band. And of course, we'll be finishing it off with a fireworks show. So the best part about it is absolutely free for entire community. Um, you know, we ask everybody to come out and enjoy uh, a, a great weekend, a family fun event. Uh, and Plus that, we also offer, uh, we're gonna be awarding six uh, veteran scholarships to UTRGV veterans. So it's a, a great big event. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Mario uh, to talk a little bit on behalf of the board. Thank you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem and, and council members. Uh, we just wanna take this time on behalf of our board members and our business community to thank the city, not only the city, but far, uh, we we're gonna thank EDC as well. And I know Mr. Dan Diaz was there earlier as he presented a check and we're, we're just so excited that these events are occurring, that they're successful, but it couldn't be without the help of the city and our EDC supporting us. So we publicly wanna tell you on behalf of our board, thank you. Thank you for your commitment. And I know this is gonna be very successful. We, we are glad that, um, that as this event occurs, we, we see each and every one of you all out there I know we have a little uh, a gift for you all to wear during that day because I know it's going to be some hot weather. So um, uh, thank you. And if there is anything else that we can improve on, we're all ears because we're here to serve our community. Thank you. Thank you. We know it's a great event and we can't wait till next weekend. Like Mario said, I have Nayeli here. She's a director of marketing and tourism. Uh, she's going to hand out a couple of uh, hats. Um, for the council and for our team to the right. 
Uh, I didn't leave the ACMs out. They'll be getting some as well. Um, but definitely it's going to be hot, and uh, we encourage everyone to wear it. And if you guys don't mind, we would love to take a photo sure. with you all down here. With or without the hats? With the hats. <laughs> we take them with hats. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, before we move on, I'd like to take the opportunity to uh, remind everybody too, coming up this Friday at 10 is the uh, opening of our inclusive park for our, our the water park of our inclusive. I think that's something we should have brought up probably a little earlier in the mayor's report. Um, Everybody's welcome to come at 10 a.m. over there at the, this weekend, right? This Friday. This Friday. This Friday at 10 a.m. we're opening the, the ground break, or the ground opening of the all-inclusive all park, splash pad. splash pad park for, for all, for our full community. And it's a big event in Texas. I know that part of our community can't wait for it and, and getting a lot of calls on it already. So everybody's welcome to come out that day. Moving on, let's go on to public hearings. This time we're going to hold a public hearing on the proposal for the fiscal year 23-27 consolidated plan strategies, which include the, the community development block grant 2023-2024 annual action plan. That hearing is now open. If I may, Please. Mayor Pro Tem, Marisa Garza, the Director of Grants Administration, and with me is Paul Villarreal, and he's the Chairman of the Community Development Council. Um, the city is uh, the re a recipient of U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development Annual Entitlement Funding, which includes the Community Development Block Grant, also known as CDBG. HUD requires that the city undergo a consolidated planning process to assess affordable housing and community development needs, a housing market analysis, and strategic plan to carry out the program. The city must also develop an annual action plan in order to identify the activities and access the federal funds. Um, the City of Edinburgh anticipates an estimated $5.4 million in the next five years of CDBG funding, and that, you know, plus or minus, depending on the, on the budget that's approved at the congressional le level. And we just received the announcement of a allocation for this fiscal year 2023 of $1.5 06, $1.06 million, a little bit over that. Um, so at this time, um, I do like to point out a correction on the agenda item, which includes our 30-day comment period. Uh, originally, we were supposed to come before you the first meeting in June. However, the, the five-year and annual action plan draft was not, was not uh, available yet or ready. So we had to push it back. Unfortunately, there was an oversight on, on staff where the dates are wrong. So the common period will begin June 24th, 2023 and expire on July 24th of 2023. During that 30 day common period, we will also have a, another public hearing to solicit comments as well um, on July 19th here at the community room at City Hall at 5.30 p.m. Uh, there are, we did include the five-year plan and it's still in draft and uh, the annual action plan with the projects that were identified. So we're here to solicit any comments that you or anybody from the public may have at this point. That being said, does anyone have any wish to 
speak up on this issue? If not, we'll. Mr. Gabriel, would you like to make any comments? We good? Okay. If not, then we'll close the hearing. Okay. And uh, I'll entertain a motion to include um, what Ms. Garza, the changes that she's requested. So moved. And a second? Second. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. We'll be back um, after those 30 days for the final approval. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Villarreal. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for being here. Next will be public hearing on special items. We're going to hold the public hearing and consider the ordinance providing for the rezoning request from residential suburban district to residential urban district being 7.92 acres out of lot 15, section 276, Texas Mexican Railway Company Survey subdivision at 710 South McCall Road. That hearing is now open. Anybody like to approach and speak, up, speak for or against this item? With nobody approaching or look like they're going to approach, I'll close the I'll close the hearing. Move and to entertain approve. a motion. Second. We got a motion. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The next is ordinances. Next three is ordinances. Concerning orders providing for the temporary special use permit for the 17th annual Texas Cookham High Stakes in Edinburgh. Event to be held on Friday, June 30th through Saturday, July 1st at Ebony Hills Golf Course. Motion, motion to approve. approve. Second. We have a motion to approve and second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next will be considering orders providing for the temporary special use permit for the DHR Purple Project A 5K for all cancers. Event to be held Sunday, June 25th from 6 a.m. through noon at the Edinburgh Municipal Park. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Any discussion on that? Mario, you want to invite the public for that one? No. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We want to make sure that um, I have Carla Garcia and myself from DHR Health. Uh, we're just here to invite the community. This is an actual celebration of life. This is not only all cancers, but we are celebrating our survivors. We have survivors that will be present on that day. It'll be taking place this Sunday. And uh, we will start, the race will start immediately at eight, but prior to, we are going to acknowledge our uh, health staff, our survivors, their families, and also the people that, that are going through the treatment right now. So this is a great time for our community to come together uh, here in the wonderful city of Edinburgh. And just, we will be at the municipal park. We wanna thank the city for allowing us this permit and making sure that we're able to utilize it and your support. And we wanna make sure that we invite everyone and we hope to see each and every one of you all out there. And uh, we don't have a hat, but we will definitely have <laughs> Something that's really important is um, making sure that you're there to support all our survivors that are with us. Thank you for this opportunity. We appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mario. Well, with that said, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Same sign. Motion carries. Consider an ordinance amending the Code of Ordinance of the City of Edinburgh, Texas, Title III, Administration, Chapter 32, Boards, Councils, Commissions, and Committees, Division Section 32.31. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve as, uh, as presented. A second with discussion. Second in uh, motion and approve. Discussion? Could uh, just give us a background on this. Um, I was trying to read, read up on it, but didn't find. I, I, I saw that it said we discussed this in January or, or Yes, sir, Councilmember Diaz. This is part of the updates that we've been making to the Chapter 32 um, ordinances. Um, this, these items were actually requested by those departments to update um, when the Housing Assistance Committee, they have already completed the, everything that they need and it's, it's no longer needed. Um, and for the landfill, um, they're trying to broaden the scope of the actual landfill committee to be more of environmental um, as part of the recycling, um, 
this, there's the safety, security, um, the permitting process, and not just towards landfill. That, that housing committee, it was just a, a special program for a limited time or? Um, or? I think Marisa can expand on that, yeah. <laughs> Um, if I may, Council Member Diaz. Yes, so basically we've had this committee for a very long time. Uh, I want to say 40 plus years. And um, every year as the time has uh, gone on, we have been producing less housing units um, because we are at the same level of funding and the construction cost has exceeded that by a lot, uh, more than 100% probably. But um, after evaluating, we don't have, we have, there are five members serving and we've had a lot of absences and in the past couple of years, we only meet once because we were down to like three units of production. And uh, so I, I thought it'd be best in the interest of the city that we uh, do away with the housing authority or dissolve it and use our community development as an oversight when needed, because when needed. we do have, technically we have two advisory boards. So I, um, I so you know, in assessing, the other board can if, assume those roles, and if there's any policy or anything into that effect, uh, then we can, we can go with them. And this is just uh, to assess needs for the city to take on a, a, a public housing? Well, no, 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 no. So we have a housing assistance program where we do remodel rehabs of existing uh, single family housing. And that's the program I'm talking about, okay. where we do construction, our model, uh, minor remodels and reconstruction. Okay. So now we're looking at two, one bedroom. We just had a bid opening of the minimum was 89,000. And uh, we had four bids and the highest was like 200 and some thousand. When before COVID, it was like at 58 to 60,000. So it's just not feasible. And then, uh, like I said, it's a five member board. We have, it's hard for us to get quorum. Um, and even just people who have the, the, the time to meet and it's only like one meeting, if anything, a year now. Okay, that, that's all I wanna know, thank you. Good, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Now we go into awarding of bids. Consider authorizing the purchase of 51 portable radios uh, from a, um, Motorola Solutions Inc. for the general fund for the Edinburgh Police Department from the Edinburgh Police Department's forfeiture fund in the amount of general fund and forfeiture fund in the amount of three hundred and one thousand five hundred and twenty-five thousand and twenty-six cents. Motion approved. Second. And a motion to approve. Any discussion? Chief, are these the same uh, radios that we are getting from the last meeting that we had or completely different or? No, these are the same ones that we've been purchasing recently. So are we adding more or? We're replacing, excuse me, Mayor and Council, Jaime Ayala, Police Department. We're replacing some of the very older radios in order for us to be able to encrypt our radios and, and bring our technology up to current standards. And so some of these are being purchased out of the general fund and then others are being uh, purchased out of the forfeiture fund. Okay, thank you, Chief. That's all that I have. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Considering authorizing the purchase of 41 Daniel Defense Patrol Rifles from Clyde Armor Inc. from, for, from the Edinburgh Police Department Forfeiture Fund in the amount of $78,966. Motion to approve discussion. Second. Motion to approve discussion. Chief, just real quick, what are they currently using right now? So currently on patrol right now, we have two different brands of weapons. One is a Bushmaster and one is Daniel Defense. The most recent purchase that was made prior to my arrival was Daniel Defense. And so we revisited uh, the specs uh, with the patrol rifle and the sight system that we put on the patrol rifle, which is main point optic sight. Uh, and the decision was made to continue with the Daniel Defense patrol rifle. And what will be done with the other weapons? Are they going to be re restored or refurbished? Or? So, so uh, we're not replacing any of the previous weapons. We, we're maintaining the Bushmasters and the Daniel Defense currently assigned to officers on patrol. What we're doing is the officers that have not had a weapon assigned to them, okay. we're purchasing weapons for patrol so that they have a patrol rifle assigned to them 
in the event that they need to respond to that. So we currently have officers that don't have those kind of weapons. We have officers that do not have a, oh, okay. a rifle assigned. Okay. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Thank you, Chief. You all good? All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed, same sign, motion carried. Consider authorizing the expenditure for the repair of unit 1153, a dozer by Holt Caterpillar for the landfill in the amounts of $46,939.97. Motion approved. Second discussion. Second and approved with discussion. Go ahead, John. Mr. Ramiro, just real quick, how long has this um, equipment been uh, not working? Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and City Council, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Ramiro Gomez, Director of Solid Waste. Um, this unit has been down for a couple of months already. Uh, we were waiting for mid-year to go ahead and appropriate for this. So since we already done mid-year, we're going to we're going ahead and uh, proceeding with the repair. And the repairs that we're going to do is it enough to get it back to functioning, or do we feel that there might be something else since it's been parked that long? No, this this will get it back to functional. It is a backup piece of equipment, so oh, okay. it, all, all we need to do is just do these repairs to it. Sure. Uh, do we need to look at something getting newer equipment, or we're okay with this? Uh, again, Mayor uh, Councilman. This is a sec uh, this is a backup piece of equipment, so we do have a newer piece of equipment. But in case that machine goes down, there is no functional backup for that one. Thank you. So good. Uh, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Consider authorizing the expenditure for the repair of Unit 1158, the compactor, same for the with a pulp caterpillar. In the amount of seventy nine thousand seven hundred sixty seventy nine thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars and fifty nine cents. Motion the line to approve. Motion to second. Approve. And second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Consider awarding RFP number twenty twenty three dash zero one one on site physical examination for firefighters to life. Extension Clinics E in the amount of $45,770. Motion approved. Second. All in favor? Raise your right hand. All opposed? Same sign. Hi, Fern. Nice to see you make it, Fern. Uh, contractuals. Consider, author consider authorizing the city manager into a facilities lease agreement between the city of Edinburgh and the South Texas College for the use of the Edinburgh Fire Department training facility and execute all documents related to their motion approved second with discussion motion to second but I have a discussion on the uh, just have a, a question and I'm not sure if you guys are aware of on section a um, let me get back to it I have to do my notes exhibit a at the end of the contract yeah yeah at the end of the contract it discusses the uh, justification? Yeah, no? on A, but the exhibit A, mm -hmm. it discussed on, num on number five, discussed mm -hmm. with any fire instructor uses a, a, used in connection with the providing the services under this agreement, the cost will be billed at $22 an hour. Mm -hmm. I think this should read at the, uh, if you look at number, uh, if you look at four, we're using actual hours cost for each fire truck operator at the overtime rate. I just believe that we should be here with, if any fire instructor should be his hourly rate or overtime rate, whatever you guys decide is, is the best. I don't think we're here as a city trying to make money from STC from it, but I don't think the way this kind of reads it, I think most of our firefighters make more than $22 an hour. It's going to end up costing us money to lend them out. So I just think you guys think the same way that should be so how did how did they come up with this amount mayor pro tem and council Ubaldo Perez, interim fire chief yes yeah, so that is uh something that when after we submitted this i looked at the previous agreement and it actually had that uh same verbiage that uh, mayor pro tem is saying where it's based on the instructor's uh salary not on yeah like a cost so yes that, that's something that would be agreeable if if you so choose. Do I do a motion? Well, you guys, there's already a motion and a second, so you have to, oh, have to amend. Well, we can add it, we can amend your motion. Or we can amend the motion uh, with. Uh, and I'll second. 
with what uh, Chief White has added to the. E the easiest thing to do is for the maker to withdraw it and to redo it. If you want to amend the motion, you got to go through a vote to Step. authorize amending and then you right. get okay. into the actual. So it's I'll just withdraw. easier to withdraw. Motion to withdraw? I'll withdraw my second. Okay, you want to make it again? You want me to? And then motion Chief. to approve uh, with the amendment as discussed. There you go. Are right, you good with that? If, if we could try to be just specific with the motion to make sure it's clear for the record. We want number five to read like number four. Similar to number four, if any fire instructor is used in connection with providing services under this agreement, the hourly late, they shall be billed the hour, hourly rate of that individual. Right, so, so reflecting the actual cost the actual of the person cost, provided. Actual cost. Okay. So that would be the motion. Is that good? Yep. And a second? Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. All against, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we go to appoint, appointments. Uh, consider appointments of the following city advisory councils, commissions, and committees. Let's start with the airport board of South Texas International. First. Motion to uh, reapprove for Moses Segovia. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. And the second is one member for the Civil Service Commission. Motion to reapprove for Roman Rodriguez. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. One member for Public Safety Board. Is it one member only? It no, says it's one member. It's four members. Okay. So, okay. I make a motion to approve four uh, members. Orlando Olivares, Johnny Hernandez, Sonia Enriquez, and Jaime Guzman. Second. Second. That, uh, Motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. And Recreation Parks Board, two members. I make a motion for Rick Olivares and Ron Jackson to second. be reappointed. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed. Motion carries. That's it. And we go to uh, other business. Future items are requested by City Council. Is it? Anybody have anything they'd like to? For the next meeting? No, sir. And we shall move on to consent, consent agenda. I need to read this one. No. Motion to approve uh, consent agenda items A, B, C, and D. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed, motion carries. Mayor Pro Tem, pardon the interruption. Um, would this be rescheduling the Tuesday, August 1st meeting to Monday, July 31st? Yes, yes it's that's correct. Yeah, yes. I just. When I discussed that one with you earlier, I just had the, the months wrong. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And the next would be the executive session. April 10th. You want to just explain to the people why we're going to schedule that one? Oh, um, on the consent agenda, we have considered rescheduling the Tuesday, August 1st meeting, a regular city council meeting to Monday, July 31st. And for that reason is because that, that Tuesday is the uh, national night out. Uh, so we can participate in the National Night Out festivities with our city. We're going to move the motion. We're going to move the city agenda one day earlier. Good. Council. Good. Uh, executive session. So move. Second. All in favor? Let's go to executive session. <laughs> 